There's been a lot of criticism of the federal response, but we're now hearing reports about how the, the mayor of New Orleans may have uh, delayed the evacuation order and how the governor of Louisiana was not fully in charge of ordering the National Guard troops from her state out. Uh, is it starting to look like there's plenty of blame to go around in this response at the local, I, I, state, and federal level? I think that's exactly right. It seems uh, like from, from the top down uh, there were um, problems and delays, and, and some of it is just uh, the system being overwhelmed. From the top down, and that's where the blame is going to go. You can count on Fox News Network to uh, divert attention, can't you? That was a an example from uh, Fox News this morning, Time Magazine's Brian Bennett there as the guest. We've got online Paul Krugman, op-ed columnist for the New York Times. His uh, column appears today and Friday, today killed by contempt. Welcome to the program, Paul. Um, hi there. Glad to have you with us. In your column today, you say it's not just incompetence that's the issue here, but ideology. Yes, this is a government composed of people who basically don't believe in the role of government. Uh, and uh, they have, uh, since the day that Bush came into office, they've tried to downgrade uh, FEMA in particular, but in general, the idea of government as a uh, something that protects people. Uh, after 9-11, I've, I've been going back over the material that I collected then. There were lots of people saying, you know, we really need to have increased protection against terrorist attacks, but that would also have meant natural disasters. A lot of it is the same response. They Instead, they continued to, to degrade the capacity, and now something happens, and guess what? Uh, we're not at all ready. One of the examples that you mention is the fight over federalizing airport security. They didn't like that even after 9-11 either. That's right. They, there was actually a very hard fight by Bush, and even more so by some members of Congress, to say, you know, we're... We, we like this. This is a privatized service, uh, and we want it that way, even though everybody knew that the private companies had completely failed to protect us against the hijackers. They still didn't want the airport screening to become a federal function. So how do you pl see this playing out now? We're talking with Paul Krugman of the New York Times in that this administration wants to say that the fault lies at the local level. They messed up. And yet the obvious response to that is, well, the locals weren't up to the task. You were. This was your job. Um, aren't they in a bit of a fix? Well, you know, I thought that they were in a bit of a fix many times before. <laughs> you and me both, man. Uh, they've had an enormous ability to, to get the media to change the narrative, to cover it over. Now, this is harder. You know, it, it, they, a lot of it has been done by flag-waving in the past, and, you know, they're... There have been jokes already about uh, Bush is going to launch a, a global war on weather systems, but that's probably not going to work. Um, <laughs> and uh, but you know they they really are trying. It, it's it's amazing now. They they're trying to lay all of the blame on mostly on on the governor of Louisiana, and this is that's crazy. I mean not, I don't know how good a job she did, but the point is there were the heartbreaking thing is we we know that there were um, military forces that could have done enormous amounts of stuff that were in the vicinity. Um, I, you know, when I wrote about this on Friday, I, I quoted from the, uh, the Biloxi local newspaper where they, uh, they had evacuated just a short distance from the coast from the devastation, and there, were, there was an Air Force mm. uh, facility where the guys were playing basketball and, and, and doing calisthenics, which is not their fault, but they weren't given orders to go in. So if this was an ideological problem, if you, you know, if you don't believe government's the solution, you don't ever want it to be government, you want it to be private or local government, um, what happens now? Are we going to see a death and burial of that type of ideology in the toxic soup of uh, New Orleans? You know, I don't trust my political instincts anymore. I would have thought there would be great national outrage if you look at it at the moment, it appears that there is, but they will try very, very hard to, to spin this thing. I mean, it's not, and, and should, we should say that the Democrats are not stepping up. You know, we're hearing uh, locals in Louisiana bitterly complaining about this, but very little from congressional Democrats. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the, someone needs to, tell, to get this, the connection in there. You know, I, one thing I haven't seen pointed out really is that um, federal disaster relief is actually a New Deal innovation. You know, before Franklin Roosevelt, 
uh, the federal government basically expressed sympathy mm. when stuff happened. And um, part of what prompted the change was a flood of the Mississippi. Yes, exactly. And the, the thing is that these people have made it very clear that they really don't like anything the New Deal brought. I mean, they, they tried to, they've, the whole, the, the principal agenda item during this past spring was to try to dismantle Social Security, which is the, the, you know, the core New Deal program, but, but it turns out they've been busily dismantling federal disaster management which is also a, a New Deal program since they took office. Yeah, I mean, out of the New Deal came the idea that the mission of government is to help those who cannot help themselves. If we have seen nothing else in this picture, it is people who did their best but were not equipped to help themselves, whether you're talking the families that you're hearing from or the local officials are crying out for help. Surely, uh, well, maybe I'm with you with, with unreliable political instincts, but surely we will see a reversal of the backlash to that principle that we've lived through through the last half a century. Well, you would think that this would be unspendable. I mean, it, it, the, the, the whole, you know, we try to, People like myself have tried over and over again to talk about cronyism and the the uh, the incompetence that results from it. And now we've got somebody who was fired from his job uh, running horse shows uh, in charge of, of, of FEMA. Michael at Brown. Moment. Yeah, and you would think that it would sink in, but, you know, we... <laughs> who knows? I, I, I understand from Get people... Sabe. All right. <laughs> I understand from people who are watching Fox News on Sunday... Um, it was as if the whole thing is over. Right. Paul Krugman, thank you so very much. Keep up the fantastic work. Op-ed columnist at the New York Times. Check out his column today, Killed by Contempt. We'll be back with more special coverage on Air America Radio. I'm Laura Flanders. After this. Nowhere to go. And I came here looking for clothes. Well, that gets you some clothes. You know what the center is down here, what I'm talking about? No. Yeah, it's, there's no center there. It's, it's nothing. Well, I go to the school. There's a school about two miles away. At the elementary, uh, middle school and the high school. But isn't there a salvation center down here? No, it's like that. Salvation? No, no. The temporary center? No, sir, they got a truck that's good. That's what I'm saying. Food and water. Oh, yeah. Food and water. Food and water. That was a clip from the coverage of President Bush's visit to the Biloxi region uh, this past weekend. Two interesting things about that trip to Biloxi. Um, listen to that, tip, that clip and you'll hear the president telling the woman there's help at a salvation center down the street. She says there's no such center. It's been wiped out. Clearly she's utterly confused. Why was the president telling her there was a salvation center that simply did not exist? Well, maybe we've got an answer. At least one media outlet uh, has put out an answer uh, that there was apparently a pretty serious discrepancy between the way that CNN covered that trip to Biloxi and reports of the very same trip on German television. German news reported that the president's trip was completely staged. As their crew watched, the open-air food distribution point that Bush visited in front of the cameras was torn down immediately after the president and the heard of his embedded reporters left and the people in the area were abandoned and left alone to fend for themselves again. So you want to know why she sounded confused as he's telling her there's a Salvation Army Center down the road? There was none. It had never been there before he got there and it wasn't there as soon as he left. I'm Laura Flanders, uh, sitting in here providing you some special coverage of the crisis in the Gulf Coast here on Air America Radio. We are streaming and blogging at airamericaradio.com. You can write to me, Laura, at airamericaradio.com. That's Laura, L-A-U-R-A, at airamericaradio.com. And you can give us a call on 866-303-2270, 866-303-2270. We've got a lot of you on the line, but I hope you'll uh, forgive me if we go to our next guest. 
Our next guest is Maxine Waters. Is she ready there on the line, Congressman Waters? Oh, we're just getting her in just a second. She's calling in from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where she is um, visiting to find out what help is available and what the people need. While we get Maxine on the line, uh, we'll go to a couple of calls, and then we'll uh, see where we go from that. Let's hear uh, Jean, Jean, excuse me, in Laguna Hill. Hey, Jean, welcome. Hi, thank you. I wanted to say how important the TV press was to show what was happening, what was really happening while our leaders were telling us that everything was working. I think if we had only heard them, we would have known what was going on. It was fascinating, wasn't it, to see what happens when journalists are truly unembedded, when they are up to their knees in water, they tell the truth. Thanks, Jean. Let's hear from uh, Stanley in New Jersey. And you know what? I'll, I'll just let the callers go when, when, okay? Stanley, welcome to the program. Hi there. I have an open letter to President Bush. Oh, you, great. Go for it. <laughs> Where were you on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? You were on your ranch clearing brush while the hurricane center in Miami was predicting a catastrophic hurricane. Right. Where were you on Monday? And Tuesday, you were out in California and Arizona lying to everybody on the... Boosting up your poll numbers. What happened to Stanley? Stanley, you still there? Yes. Yeah, keep going. Now, where were you on Wednesday? You were back at your ranch. Then somebody must have whispered in your ear, you better get your ass up to Washington. So you flew up to Washington in your darn, darn, nothing-to-do attitude. You didn't know which side was up. You didn't know which side was down. And you are just a faker. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Stanley. You. you know, in all this discussion about who is responsible and who is not, it couldn't be more clear. The president issued a statement from his office on Saturday, last Saturday, putting FEMA, his Federal Emergency Management Agency, part of uh, the Homeland Security Office, putting them in charge of coordinating all rescue and relief operations. You can read it. It's up at our blog at the Laura Flanders Show page of AirAmericaRadio.com's website. Just check it out, AirAmericaRadio.com. It's right there in black and white from the President's own press secretary, FEMA's in charge. We've got Maxine Waters on the line, Representative Maxine Waters, Congresswoman. Eight, oh. um, welcome to the program. Welcome back. You're in Baton Rouge? No, I'm, a, I'm in Appaloosa. What are you seeing? Uh, I'm in Appaloosa. You know, they have sent people from New Orleans all over the state and out of the state. And some of these are shelters and places that are not getting a lot of attention. I wanted to see for myself so that we could go back to Congress with the right message about what is needed. So I've been in Baton Rouge, I've been in New Orleans, I've been in um, uh, Lafayette and some other places. I'm in Appalachia this morning. What are you seeing? Well, what I'm seeing is there's a lot of uncertainty. People just don't know what's going to happen to them. They, for example, when I was in New Orleans, they have the airport that they use as a staging ground to send people out to other cities and other states. But people were packed up. It looked like downtown Haiti. Uh, and people didn't know where they were going. There's all of this uncertainty. As a matter of fact, I understand that they tried to put some people on the bus this morning and send them to Utah, and the people began running. I'm going to keep walking so that I can get out of the noise here. No, don't send me to Utah, please. That's yeah. what some people are saying. Well, they don't know some Utah people. Okay, I'm, I'm moving out of the noise now. It's okay. We can hear you perfectly well, Congresswoman. Oh, good. So uh, it's so much uncertainty, and families have been separated. You have husbands and wives have been separated. Uh, you know, for example, just talking to uh, some people about a husband that's here, and his wife is over in Houston, and they've got to do family reunification. This is uh, it's an awesome catastrophe here. 